I am about to share with you on this video how you can go from self-judgment, especially when it comes to your finances and the things you want to do, the mistakes you've made, from going away from that place of self-judgment to being able to kindly make moves that's going to make you make more money. For those that I haven't met, I'm Dr. Latifat. I'm a GI doctor. And I'm also the founder of Money Fit MD, which is a platform that is completely dedicated to helping women physicians know their money, have more control over their time, curate their rich life so that they can make more impact in the world. So I'm excited about the episode that I'm about to share with you guys today. And part of the reason why is, you know, after coaching hundreds and probably thousands of women physicians, to be honest with you, one of the things that I found is that many times we're afraid of taking actions and making moves. And if you look at the data, when it comes to investing, it actually says that women are better at investing than men for the most part. However, we're less likely to invest. So the question becomes, how can we get over that fear of investment so that we can actually invest and make more money? And if you're looking at the data, you know there's like disparities in net worth. You know that even within physician communities, there is like a male physician has a higher chance of making about seven figures more than their female counterpart over the span of their lifetime. And you guys know, if you've been on my platform at all, I'm so pro-investment, not just saving, but pro-investment. And the reason why is because I truly believe that investment is how you get to New York faster. You can walk there or you can fly there. I'd rather fly <laughs> because I want to get there in one piece. So when I think about, if we could just get over that thing that we do that prevents us from getting in the game and making moves, it actually means that we get to succeed more. So how can we do that? And literally, big shout out to the doctor that reached out to me just today, the day that I'm recording this, who was like, I have credit card debt and I also have investment plans. I'm trying to pay off the debt. However, there are other things that are coming up when it comes to family, like traveling internationally to go visit family. And we all know how precious time and life is. But they are literally stuck because they're like, I am just so indulged in self-judgment that it makes it harder for me to even come up with a plan on how to pay off this debt. Because they're literally going down the drain of self-judgment. So big shout out to her for reaching out. And also, guys, if you have any questions that you want me to cover on the podcast, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. Send me a message and go, Latifa, do you mind weighing in on this on the platform? If it is appropriate, I promise to give it a best shot and help you answer the questions because every single thing that I do here is so that it can help you do the things that you want to do. And the best way for me to know what the heck to do is number one, I, I mean, we, you and I were about the same-ish in many ways. So I think about the things you think about, but also it is helpful when you tell me exactly what's going on so that I can help create more content that is going to help you create what you want to create in life. So big shout out to her. And because of her, y'all get to benefit on how you can switch from that place of self-judgment to more of like clarity of thought and being able to take the action forward as opposed to like going inside the pit. I mean, when I think about this, the analogy, the best analogy that I can think of is imagine you're trying to go from here to, I don't know, somewhere that's like five miles away from you. And now there is this big hole in the ground and, you know, you're like, well, I can jump through the pothole, <laughs> the huge pothole. I'm from Nigeria. We've got some big potholes in some places and also in the U.S. too. The road on the main road, we got some potholes. I'm like, guys, what's going on? What's happening with my tax dollars? <laughs> Anyways. So imagine that pothole. You can literally go in there and stick to the bottom and be in there forever. Or you can like race through it, move efficiently through there and get to the destination you're trying to get to. I'm not suggesting that you should try and bypass all your emotions and not feel your emotions. I'm not. I'm not saying don't be sad. I'm not saying don't be angry. I'm not saying don't be remorseful. However, I believe that if those emotions are helping you, then sure, go ahead and like when I'm pissed up, that helps them produce a podcast because I'm like freaking disparities and it's so die. <laughs> Y'all like let's see if I need Jesus. I know, I know. That's why I'm I know. I already that's why I'm taking care of that part. Right? But the key is this, guys. When you think about the fact that if every emotion can be a foil, is this foil helping you move forward? 
or is this well keeping you stuck or regressing you? If I had a penny for every woman physician that has told me that mistakes from the past, the decisions that they've made that led to the outcomes they did not want, is one of the reasons that keeps coming to their mind and making them sit down in this place of self-judgment, which means that now they're not taking actions, they're not paying off their high interest debt, they're not investing, they're not living their rich life, right? And so what I'm talking about on the episode is stemmed from that because when you learn this, then it's going to be able to help you actually do the things you want to do and also celebrate the life that you have. Because when you and I think about it, like our life is precious. I don't know. You know, we, I have family members that live till their late 40s, 60s, 70s. You know, I got some in the 90s as well that I'm like, yes, <laughs> you know, send me all the longevity juice, right? But the key is this, guys. Wasting our time, letting the things that we cannot change about the past limit us from accomplishing what we can accomplish in the future is literally you and I putting our stem and doing our part to make disparities continue. And I know that consciously you're not about that life. I know that consciously you do not want that happening. I know that you want to grow. I know that you want to have money. You want to have freedom to be able to practice medicine on your own terms. And that is why self-judgment can be so counterproductive because it is doing anything but that. Okay. And the thing is this, I know that you and I are reasonable humans. We are not trying to negatively impact our own journey. You're not like, I'm going to sit down around here and hang out and indulge in all the self-judgments and shame myself and guilt myself because that's what's up. No, we're not doing that. However, our actions do have consequences and the consequences of what we're doing is that. But I also want to just remind you that this is not something new. This is not something unique to you. This is normal human brain. And the reason why is this, imagine this, if I was in the, you know, I was hanging out and we just did it, came back from a road trip that we're doing in California and we were visiting family. And I remember hanging out with my cousin, big shout out to her, my little, well, she's no longer little, but I used to call her little cousin. Y'all know all those people that are like old, but not, you still, you're younger than you. But anyway, so she's way younger than I am. And I was, we were sitting down and we had eaten. And then there was still some leftovers that she had there. And I was like, we need to remove those leftovers because if it's still here, we're just going to keep eating it. Right. And so while the leftover was on the table, I was, she was like, oh, no, I'll, she's like, I'll take it away when we're done. And for like 20 minutes, we were not eating. And then after the 20 minutes, next thing I know, I find my hand <laughs> reaching out and eat it again, right? And I'm like, I'm definitely not hungry. I'm just eating because it's there in front of me. And many times we do this when it comes to food where we're eating and then we're like, I'm not even hungry. Or we're like, oh, I was just hungry. Just make something up because you just said the first thing that comes to your mind. But the bottom line is this. We're reasonable human beings and there are times when we do things that may not seem reasonable, but then we find our brain is quick to find ways to justify it. So for example, if you are going back to the example that I gave earlier of someone that had debt and was trying to pay it off, but her self judgment was actually preventing her from doing that more easily, more freely, and also preventing her from being able to live the life that she had richly. And she said, I keep indulging and keep getting back into the self judgment. But the thing is this, when you have that, when you that space of self-judgment, what our brain does is it's already decided that it wants to go into the pathway of self-judgment, the peak of self-judgment, because that maybe it's lowest hanging fruit. Maybe you're someone that just has been judging yourself for a long time. So now it's just easy for your brain to go there. And so for her, what ends up happening is our brain now starts to find evidence to justify the emotions that our brain already decided is her emotional home. So for you, maybe it's like feeling sad about your finances and now you're already sad about your finances just because that's your normal emotional home. And now your efficient brain system, right? That likes to conserve energy goes back and says, what's the evidence? What's the evidence for the thing that I want to feel like make we're reasonable people? How can we find the justification for what we want to feel? And so you end up 
looking for evidence. And so if you have it in your past, you may be one of those people that now brings it in and you're like, see, I made a mistake. I paid late payment five years ago, or I've been paying late payment for the last couple of months, or I was told that debt is bad and now I use debt for something in my life. Or, you know, my real estate investment is actually not an investment. It's a liability and I've been losing money on it. And I should have known, I should have made a difference, blah, 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 right? But understand that your emotional home was already decided because it was familiar to you. And now you're just finding evidence and justification. And the more time you spend on the top of that pothole, the more you're going to sink to the bottom of the pothole. And the harder it is for you to get out of it. Now you're like, I need somebody to get a ladder, <laughs> bring me a ladder into this pothole because you have like literally sunk into the depth, right? So that's why it's important for you to, again, I'm not trying to say avoid your emotions, but that is why it's important for you to learn this simple yet powerful thing that I'm going to teach you today so that you can now be able to get yourself out of the pit faster so that you can move forward in your journey and do the things you want to do, which is have more money, more freedom and be able to live the rich life that you've been blessed with, okay? And by the way, the idea of this came from my own personal experience, not necessarily with money, but with flying. You know, some of you guys know that my family and I, we traveled around the world last year, and one of the things you may not know about me is I actually don't like flying. The actual act of being on an airplane, I don't like. And that fear has gone up since I've had kids. And before I used to just say that I did not like flying, but it really is the fear of flying. And it just is because I like my kids and I know that if I'm not here with them, there could be potential, there will be consequences for them. I mean, you know, we're doing the best according to them right now. We're doing the best to make sure that they will be okay from a financial perspective. God forbid if something was to happen, but you know, that was part of the fear. So when we felt the nudge to travel, I was just like, oh my goodness, God, like, okay, this is all cute and stuff, but can we like impute the part and remember the fact that you're talking to somebody that does not like flying, that has like hates flying and has a fear of flying. And so there are different things that I've done in the past to help me overcome that fear. And one of it is visualization. So visualizing the destination that I'm going to has been really, really helpful because if I focus on that, then, you know, I relax, I breathe and I'm like, focus on that. I, I visualize getting down from the airplane you know, walking to get the Uber or family or whoever is getting me from there. And what I do after, the more I focus on that, the more my brain goes away from what is going on right now, which is moving an airplane. However, so that works. However, what I found is that even with that, I still hated turbulence. And so every time it's turbulent, it's almost like my brain bypasses the visualization and just starts doing its own thing, which is my previous home, when it comes to traveling, which is like fear, oh my goodness, I hope this doesn't crash, I hope nothing bad happens, oh my goodness, a plane that disappeared in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, in the middle of the Asian Ocean, like all this other stuff, that's, I'm just being honest with you, right? And what I found that helps me the most is number one, that visualization did help. However, what also helped me was every time there was turbulence, I would feel the turbulence and then I would just go into gratitude. So every turbulence, I'll go, well, thank you, God, for the fact that airplanes even exist. Thank you for a safe journey. Thank you for protecting me. Like, every turbulence is literally a reminder that God has my back. And the fact that, like, most airplanes actually get to their destination is literally a miracle <laughs> from the fact that this huge thing is flying in the airplane with, like, hundreds and hundreds of people sometimes, and we're able to, like, fly like birds. Like, amazing. Like, such gratitude for the brain that God has given us, the creativity that we as humans have to be able to do this. And I'm so grateful that I'm in 2024 where the risk of stuff like it's so low so literally every time there's turbulence i just go into gratitude and what i notice is like the more i do that even on the same airplane the less i mean the more that path now becomes automated so now i'm not having to go oh my goodness i'm freaking out i'm freaking out oh wh what was that exercise again no it becomes now automatic because i'm creating a new neural pathway and i know that the more that i travel and i, I mean i don't want turbulence still but the more I travel and if there is turbulence, the more frequently I do that, the more my brain now starts to create that pathway that is efficient, right? So for you who may have been someone that has like negative emotions, like self-judgment, uh, shaming yourself, guilting yourself, what I want you to now do is this. I want you to take that as a, as a, is it a stimulus? Yes. Yeah, so a stimuli, 
or a signal that you should take another action. And that action is something that you say, right? And I want I want you to decide for yourself, but I'm going to tell you what I found to be easiest for myself and also for many people. It's stuff like, okay, you already, the point of this is to take the action that is most effective, that is most helpful, that is more productive, doesn't take you to the past, but takes you to the future. And only using the past as a way of like, as a fuel for the future, not as a way of like, you know, anchoring yourself again to the past that you may be trying to get away from. And so for you, it might be, you know, I hate the fact that I'm dead, but I'm glad that I know that now, not when I'm like 80 years old. I'm glad that I'm learning this skill set now, as opposed to like when I now have like 10 times this in bed, right? Better now than later, right? And I want you to do that in a way that it's not just like, don't overthink it, but just like say the words. And again, the more you practice this, the easier it's going to get and the faster it's going to get. So for you, it may be, maybe you've lost money in an investment before. And now you're trying to invest again and your brain is like, oh my goodness, we sucked the first time. And you're like, you know what? I'm grateful that I've learned a new way of doing this. I'm grateful that I've learned from my message, from my mistakes. I'm grateful that I've learned from that past about what I could do better differently next time. Better differently. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. <laughs> like, is that a word? But you get my point, right? So just doing those action of speaking, right? In a way that like is more gratitude focus, right? And, you know, for me, I'm a person of faith. So I would say, you know, thank you, Lord, for this. And for you, if you're not a person of faith or you practice a different faith, then find gratitude in something. And if my kids have something to say, they're like, um, at least is what they say. You know, it's like this. At least it's not. At least it's not. At least I'm knowing now than, than later. And every single time you have that negative expression of judgment or shame or stuck in the past, I want you to say at least or gratitude for what you could get as a way, like a positive out of it, a good out of it. Again, I'm going to make another video, guys, if you may, it may be coming out soon about my own personal $15,000 mistake that I decided that I'm just going to get crazy return on investment for. And, you know, I could sit down and indulge in the past, but it's like, you know what, at least I get to make that mistake now at 15 K whatever that thing is costing 15 K as opposed to like when it could cost me $150,000. Right? So, this stuff helps. I want you to practice it. Don't overthink it. I know that you're an academic and you like hate all those gratitude journals, and but just indulge me for this one time, right? Literally just, you know, it's like when there's a, when someone presses a doorbell, it's a stimulus that says, take an action and check the door, right? You're not like, oh, is the FBI looking for me? Is someone coming to get me? Well, hopefully you're not, unless you got some shadiness happening. But, you know, it's literally that stimuli creates an action, a response from you. So every time you find yourself in that self-judgment, I want the stimuli to be this. And I want you to practice this starting today. Practice this today. Practice this this week. And I want you to do me a favor and send me a message on Instagram and let me know what how that has changed things for you. And my Instagram is, you know, you can search for Money Fit MD or Latifat Akintade. You'll be able to find me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know. Comment here as well. Let me know how this exercise works for you. Because literally, this is a simple exercise that I truly, truly believe that if you actually practice this, it takes you 30 seconds. And imagine if 30 seconds could take you from avoiding to doing, can take you from costing yourself negatively when it comes to like the amount of interest you're paying. And even let's even forget the finances for a second. Just the the privilege of feeling good about yourself as opposed to like feeling bad and what that impact has on your relationships like literally this compounds everything compounds so i want to know what your thoughts are send me a message on instagram or facebook but also i would love it if you can spend like 30 seconds right now scroll to the bottom of whatever you're listening listening uh and leave us a review so leave us a review was this helpful for you how is this helpful for you and don't forget as always i want you to share this with other women physicians because this is literally how we change the world together. One woman physician that's not self-judging herself the way the world has told us to at a time. I love you guys so much. Always, always a pleasure and an honor. I'll see you in the next episode. And if you have not subscribed, make sure you do. I love you. Bye. <laughs>